Okay. Hey guys, Daniel here from Team Caribras, and I am joined by Finian, who came first place in the Irish Remote Duel Tournament. This is the first Irish event that we've had in quite a while, um, and we had 24 players, so five rounds of Swiss. So, Finian, first off, congratulations. Um, Thank you. And what deck did you decide to play for this event? So, uh, I call it PK Fire Warrior. So it's um, uh, it's basically it it, it it was kind of like a PK Infernoble deck, but now there's only like a few Infernoble monsters in it. Um, so it's really just yeah PKs and then Fire Warriors kind of Iso Turbo um deck. So uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So I mean, do you want to just jump into the main deck monsters, and we can kind of go through. Um, yeah, what each sure. of them brought to the deck. Uh, and this so, is basically a combo deck, is it? Oh yeah, like it's it's a it's a real like yeah, it's just real crazy combo deck. Like it's yeah, it's pure combo. There's no real there's very little control or like mid range in it. It's just yeah. pure, just going going for it. So first of all, um obviously if you're gonna play any PK deck, you gotta be playing three Torn Scale. This card is absolutely broken because um it's a starter and and then it's two extend and ends on like it gets you to two extenders by itself so it's like it's really insane um yeah so you you got to play that that's kind of that's kind of why uh what why i'm playing this deck which just because torn exists so it, it just gives you so much power and then for the other pk monsters i'm playing uh one copy of boots um one copy of cloak yeah these these were perfect uh at one on one i very rarely needed the second boots i was gonna play it but i just decided to slim down the deck it yeah it was fine um if you normal summon and use it to make eyes old it's fine because you can just uh like it's it's just a, a, bl a fog blade or a sure. um just more interaction just, basically yeah yeah it's just like it's just another extender and stuff you, um so i don't i don't think it's a problem then uh we're playing we're playing three copies of connector and the one dolphin yeah like if you're playing an azul deck you need to be playing um this package because it's just insane it's the dolphin just gets you to free uh hand knowledge so but yeah that, uh yeah it gets you to free hand knowledge so it's like really insane um and then yeah just a one card is old so it really puts them on a pressure because if they if you normal someone is old they have to ash it so if you have an extender you win the game um yeah so pretty broken so like it's cool what i like about this deck is uh you play two really broken uh normal summons and then uh yeah so then basically like i said so uh yeah three so i'm only playing three uh infernoble cards um renaud is really insane in this deck because it gets you to add back ddr um out of your graveyard and then you can just use that to end on insane boards um and then uh oliver is basically your main tuner extender in the deck so if they stop the azold or you get in the beard you can just oliver effect most inferno decks play three oliver but um the deck was already at 42 with two so i kind of want to keep it as tight as possible and it's it's in it's not as much of a pure inferno build so like yeah i think i think t uh two is fine so then i had uh two red layer and to Flint Lady, so um, me, like my friends and I, were like really trying to slim this down to as, as close to forty as possible. It's at forty-two, so I would play three and three of these. But again, I just want to keep a tight build so I could really see um, my going second cards and stuff as much as possible. But so like two and two is fine because these are both searchable off, all searchable off Durandal. Um, yeah, both really good. It's like if you open Red Layer and Connector, it means uh, you're your your opponent ha like is going to be in in trouble because uh, red layer is two thousand neck. Then the last um, of the fire warriors I played was uh, the one Gearfried. So you're not really going to be um, special summon this turn one as much because uh, I don't, as you saw I don't play Ogier because because I have enough normal summons already. But uh, your main idea is to add this off old and then it's just like a follow up for uh, for your following turn. Um, because so it's as you'll see, redundancy next... to kind of ensure that you kill on the next turn, is it? Yeah, exactly. Because like you, you, um, I because while I'm playing in the extra deck, you'll see in the way like the basic win con in this deck is to shut down your opponent. 
and then you just drop gear freed and just a, like attack the game really because you want you really want to OTK them as fast as possible. You don't have time to be wasting. Then I just played um, three ashes, the only hand trap in in the in the deck. Um, this was just like it was an open format. I didn't really know what to play while I was coming up against. And Ash is just really good right now in, if I'm playing meta. So in general, I just thought like Ash would be tree Ash would be like really good. Obviously, would um, you would you change that if you were expecting kind of more specific meta or do you um, think the Ash is kind of no? I think I think like uh, I think Ash was it was more the other. Um, I played six defensive kind of cards. It's the other one that's going to come up later that I'd probably cut for another hand trap, but I definitely play Ash right now because right. you have Dogmatica. Um, it's really good against Drytron, you know, stop spend tens and stuff. So like, it's it's it just seems to be uh, pretty clutch right now. So then, yeah, I played uh, I played the um, I played the bricks. Uh, yeah, the, the the one issue that's the big issue with this deck is is it plays like it plays a lot of bricks. Um, because there's there's even more bricks, but these these are like the main monster ones. Uh, Cult wing is a hard brick. You never want to draw this. It can be you can combo with Cult wing in your hand, but you end on like a slightly worse board. This is fine to open because Carbon Edon can special summon from hand or deck. And Carbon Edon, I don't even think that's a brick because I'm one, I'm playing um, something in the extra deck that can help me discard it and get it to the graveyard really easy. And then it's just like a free tuner extender. So I think Carbon Edon's actually like half a brick like it's not the best card to open but because you can pitch it to the grave so easily off torn it's just a free extender then really because you can just banish it and summon um you're gonna summon galaxy serpent off that uh oh yeah this is the main deck then um so like for the main one ofs will you play rota obviously fire warrior deck and foolish burial Bane, the best target for foolish burial is actually carbon add-on because you foolish carbon add-on and then summon galaxy serpent it's just really insane, and then that means you don't need to um, go into. Uh, I'm playing Cherubini in the extra deck, so you don't need to go into Cherubini to send Carbon N on. And this can also like foolish the PKs as well if you need to. Like, so it's just really versatile in the deck. Right. Um, so next, uh, yeah, next, like, yeah, you're playing. Oh yeah, actually, I'll show these ones first. Then we're playing uh, loads of searchers. So you're playing three Heritage of Chalice. This card's insane because uh, it searches any of your Infernoble Knights, and then it can also search um, either of the three copies of Durandal, um, which these these can search uh, Fireflint or Red Lair uh, or any of the Infernoble Knights. So, like that's that's really insane. So you're just this is just six extra copies of Durandal basically, or the Infernoble Knights if you want to like just add them straight away. Um, yeah, so you, you, you just got to play these. So that that's kind of like why it's still kind of an Infernoble deck. You just play like more Infernoble spell cards than monsters. Yeah. So yeah, those are the main searchers. And then for the non-searching uh, equips, um, what you call it? So I'm playing f- for milling off is old, play DDR, and, and then I'm playing three living fossil. The reason I'm playing three living fossil just because you'll see I play uh, Power Tool Dragon in the extra deck, and that's kind of the main combo. You you make Power Tool Dragon, and then you add basically add Living Fossil, or you can search it off a Durandal if you have the Living Fossil in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and then DDR, DDR is insane. Like the, this card's literally broken because you can basically banish any two warriors off Phoenix Blade, and then add them back with DDR. And one of the main combos you do um, was add back DDR. You can add back DDR off uh, Renaud. And then further combo. And then, yeah, so the other defensive card I'm playing is Tree Triple, triple Tactics Talent. Um, I never resolved this, actually. Just anytime it was in my hand, I, I, I didn't need it. Um, I don't know like if I'd cut it. I, 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 I don't know if I'd cut it, though, because it just could have come up. It just didn't happen to come up. But, like I just didn't draw it when I was going second. And then I didn't need it when I opened it, but it just very, very much. There was very much situations where it could have. But uh, yeah, talents is just insane. Again, this is an open format, so I might play something else if I if I was playing like an LCS or something, and I knew the format. But um, yeah. just because it's just generically good, I was kind of afraid of uh, Dragoon. I thought just lots of people, and there was an Adamant player player Peter playing Dragoon, but I didn't I didn't uh, see the 
talents. So I thought like talents might be just pretty decent to steal monsters and stuff. Yeah. And then you play the two PK traps. Um, yeah, you pretty much got to play these. Uh, you could play like two shades and stuff, but I'd rather just play one fog blade, one shade because there was cer- there's certain matchups this format where you don't necessarily uh, you want to end on a, a fog blade over this because it's maybe because uh, I'll explain why later. And then it's it's just good to have the versatility. This actually came up huge against Adam Emancipator. Um, I was able to like I normal summon boots going to his old, and then he gammas the his old. I ash the his old. So I got the add, but then I was like, okay, I'll his old effect, and then he gamma the his old again. So that that got destroyed. So then I go boots effect, add fog blade, and then this w- because he kind of had a poor hand, I was able to like stop his turn yeah. uh, with a fog blade, and that really came up. So yeah, that's the main deck. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the extra deck, we're playing uh, two as old. Yeah, you got to you got to play two of these cards because they just. Uh, the second one did come up a little bit, but it was just mainly in like against like real grindier decks. You want to be able to go into like a second as old, or if one gets stopped, then on the following turn you might be able to interrupt them with your hand traps and stuff. So yeah. then a second one comes up or whatever, like it's just really clutch. It can um, or if they like uh, ogre the first effect, you can make a second one, stuff like that. Really, um, you're obviously you're yeah you're playing uh. Christian Halky Fibrex, this is how you get to your main, you know, your main combo. You gotta play it. Um so yeah. Uh oh yeah, so here's here's kind of like a little bit of the tech that I'm playing is Barricade Boar Blocker. This is the reason why uh, I could always open um Carbon Head on and still play. I didn't it didn't really come up too much, but uh basically this fix means is uh you basically jer- activate it by discarding a card and then during the end phase you can add back a continuous spell from your grave. What's funny is, is this is ruled where you don't need to have any target on activation. Um, so you can just activate a discard a card and then um, and then just like complete continue to play. And then you don't you don't need a target on end phase. So it's like really broken. This is this is basically just like says discard one card from your hand. So it's just kind of kind of fixes hands and it can clear up zones and stuff if you need to. If it it's kind of clogs because of roared on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now, now, now we're playing um, Cherubini. Uh, yeah, the, the, this card's insane because um, it just means that uh, you can always get to... Uh, it ha- just really helps you to get to Appaloosa and then it also just means... Because it can mean you can either go... Uh, so you go... If you go torn straight into this, you foolish Carbonet on and then if they stop your combo, you just have like Carbonet on Engrave, and then Carbonet on any monster is Hattie Fibrox in full combo. Um, so this is really insane. And then it also means you can summon Torn off his old, which um, comes up a lot because um, of another card I'm playing. So then um, one Aurorodon, yeah, like, uh, obviously this is insane. Summons three tokens. Um, just really helps you uh, get into your plays. Um, obviously, yeah, you need it if card's broken. And then that's why you play Coltwing, obviously, because you want to summon that off. Uh, then, yeah, they play in Appaloosa. So basically, uh, when they banned Link Cross, um, it was really hard to get the uh, get the gate out before making Halky Fibrix, because you can't, you pretty much can't make Herald now because you don't have the Link Cross tokens and stuff. So the next best thing is you make uh, Appaloosa, and that's why I'm playing this this version of Infernobles as opposed, or this version of. Warrior as opposed to pure Infernobles because it can get out Appaloosa every single turn. You make Appaloosa and then you go uh, with Cherubini and then you have the Carbonet on in Grave. So if they like Nibiru or if they stop the Appaloosa or any of your combos, you still have like a Carbonet on in Grave and stuff. So it's kind of like they have to Nibiru you at a certain point and then you can just like extend with Oliver or something. So like Appaloosa is, yeah, just insane. Um, and then, then for this. Uh, two level nine synchros. We're playing, yeah. So funny enough, we're playing uh, Charles, and I'm playing uh, Shen Shen. This is this card's really good because uh, a lot of the time you like when you make a you make a level nine, and then basically I'm pretty much just going to show now. You pretty much just go into um, VFD. So like when you make a level nine and go into VFD, Charles does nothing. Well, th- this card's insane because you make VFD, you detach it during your opponent's turn. And then on your following turn, you can just Shen Shen summon itself back. So it's like kind of it's kind of useless to make Charles at some scenarios. There are some combos we make Charles, and then um, because we're playing VFD, 
we're also playing um so we're playing VFD and then we're also playing the Trishla fusion. Um this card this card is ridiculous in in VFD because it's just um Aurorodon basically faci easily facilitates you to be able to make this because you usually go shade token and Aurorodon straight into this and then overlay it with Shen Shen for VFD. It just make it just makes it free. It's just really good. It's just like instead of making two actual two level nine synchros, um, it's insane. And the last of this two le so for level seven synchros, you're playing Paratool Dragon. So like I said, you play uh, three living fossil. You go Paratool, uh, reveal three living fossil, and then lo use living fossil to revive Galaxy Serpent or whatever. Or you can add. Durandal, if you already add the living fossil. And then shooting riser is really important in this deck because um a lot of time, like say if you if you can't get to Cherubini, so say a Zol gets stopped and you get can't get to Cherubini, you need like a level two, and this basically facilitates you getting to a, a level two tuner, and just the way you can modulate its level, it can just really come up um if you if you if you're kind of struggling to set up like set up your board or the fact that it's just the versatility of this card is insane. So, yeah. and then lastly, you're playing Roland um, and Herald. So Herald's like part of your end board. Your main end board with this deck is Herald, Appaloosa, and a VFD off just as old. And then Roland is just good because um, there's so, there's some combos. So if you open Renaud, you can do a combo where you end on VFD, Appaloosa. Uh, Herald and then a Charles, so you use this to go into Charles, and then you get the puff for Charles. So it still comes up a lot. And mm -hmm. um, that's that's if you open the Renaud along with a way to Zold, you can um, use Renaud to DDR back the um, Phoenix Blade, and then Phoenix Blade banish Charles, and then uh, detach. Yeah, so you detach Charles off VFD and then revive it. It's it's really wild. I did I actually did that combo like once as well. It was pretty insane. So the side deck then I'm just playing um three three Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Um this card's like just really good this format. It's especially good against Drytron and stuff, but I just thought in general it'd just be very good. Uh as a hand trap just stop reviving. So I'm basically I'm playing nine hand traps in the in the side deck because I didn't really know I was gonna come up against Nibiru, um, Nibiru, I probably, I probably wouldn't play for like if I, was, if I, if I, if I knew I was going to be going up against meta and stuff. But because I, I knew this, I'd be playing like a lot of rogue decks because it was more like a local and it was more open. I just thought, you know what, I'll just have Nibiru just to be safe, you know, in case someone's playing a disgusting combo deck like mine. So yeah, and, um, it, it, it did, it did come up against uh, Thunder Dragon, um, and then yeah, again three Gamma. Uh, Gamma is just going to be pretty effective in, a, in in any format, really. Like just be able to negate and destroy. It's insane. And then, uh, lastly, we just have yeah, you know, we just have some uh, back row hate. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Cosmic Cyclone, Lightning Storm, and Duster. These didn't really come up. I only cited like Duster and the two Cosmics uh, when I was coming up against. Uh, what was it called? Um, the Unchained matchup, and they didn't even do anything because he flipped a uh, different dimension and ground. So it was like, oh, sick. Yeah, pretty. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, so, any major takeaways? Like, is there anything obvious that you change with the list? Um, with the exception of you kind of pointed out cards that you might change if you expect a different matter. Um, yeah. So, like, I I don't know. Like, uh, I change, you know, the side and. The X uh, side and the hand traps and stuff around a little bit. If I was playing a different tournament, like if I was playing an LCS or a tournament where I expected loads of meta, yeah. I change those. Um, for the list, uh, I don't know. Like I, uh, I, I guess n no, not particularly. Like, I thought everything well worked pretty well. Well, I like I w I've I've thought about playing different types of Infernoble Warrior list. I want to tr check out the Pure Warrior. I've just been trying to explore this one a lot. But now, after um, you know, come away doing well with this, I kind of feel like okay, I'm gonna try it. The pure, I might even try. There's a another thing like I might try it, which seems really risky because it came up a lot for me today. Would be maybe to cut down on the normal summon. So instead of playing connector and torn, maybe just play with torn. I don't know how how much I like that though, because uh, the thing about connector is is um, I think with this deck is like 
So if I'm playing a control deck, which I didn't play of really any today, or I didn't play if I play against a deck that doesn't lose to VFD or doesn't struggle with VFD, I probably I can just not make it. So what Connector does is Connector lets me see the hand and then it gives you the exact attribute I need to call. So I see they're on a, like a light deck or a dark deck. I can just call it means I'm always going to call the attribute right. So um and then if I'm playing a like a control deck, I would probably um not end on VFD and then I just end on like Appaloosa Herald, uh Charles, and then a set fog blade. So like that's why connector is like really good because especially with VFD, because uh I can just switch up my strategy if if it, if I think it's not good. Um yeah. so like maybe that, but then like I wouldn't mind cutting down on the normal summons and maybe playing more extenders. That's the only thing. Because so sometimes like you can you could cut the connector package and put in the uh the extra red layer and uh, yeah, the extra red layer. I, I, you know what? This sounds absolutely mental, but I nearly connect cut the tr- the. I nearly cut cut like the three connectors, leaving the dolphin, and I'll explain why. The reason I was thinking about leaving in dolphin is because you can summon dolphin off of old. If I make Cherubini, I already have a tuner. I already have Carbonella on grave, and that, that's what I did a lot this tournament. Tournament is like I'd go into Cherubini and then use the PKs then in grave to make is old, and instead of so I, I wouldn't need to summon a tuner then off his old because I have Cherubini. And then I'd summon the Dolphin yeah. and I could pitch off the Dolphin. And then also like Dolphin and any extender, normal summon's really good. So like I could even con- cut the connectors and keep the Dolphin in. Plus it's a level three, which could come up for Cherubini. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure actually how much, but yeah, that's like the only change I think about experimenting with. But I don't think like having the connector was bad. I think it was really good today. Yeah. Um, just quickly, Remote Duel, have you played it before? How are you finding Remote Duel compared um, to traditional? Okay, yeah. So to I I think I think in general in in general, I think locals in playing in real life is still going to be a little bit better than Remote Duel. But Remote Duel does have like its advantages. Um first of all, it's so much better than playing, you know, um on you know, online sure. or yeah or anything like that or um it's way better than that but i think what's fantastic about remote duels is um yeah you just have that interaction too i like being in like the comfort of my own home you know what i mean because i can get up and get myself a coffee get myself something to eat um you know in between rounds it's nice uh you know um i like as well which is good but i do i do i find it fantastic you know what i mean i would try to recommend it to as much people as possible because um yeah so basically i've been playing with the northern card games uh locals i played i think two of those one was only like a short eight man and then i played the Yu-Gi-Oh day one which was the same size as this uh yeah. five rounds uh, i played that and then i played the remote duel extravaganza uk and ireland event uh and actually um with i entered that with dino i actually i actually topped that came 12th that was like my first that was my first top ever which was which is kind of mad. That was like an 83 player event at seven rounds. And that was so, so much fun. Like I had so much uh, fun chatting with people and stuff. I think like one of the big takeaways, yeah, is just the interaction. Like I loved, uh, even from that tournament, like my favorite thing was um, actually just chatting in the, in the waiting room and like the banter you'd have there just, you know, with the guys and stuff. And that's just something that you just don't have when you're just um, playing online, you know, playing on. Yeah. When you're playing online on like simulators and stuff, it's just, yeah. I I I kind of I kind of hate it. I stay away from that. So I do love remote duel. It's 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 yeah. It's definitely something you should try if you don't have like locals in in your area and stuff. Yeah. Um. So finally, just like I think we've kind of covered everything here. Um. Obviously, there might be some people looking for combos. So do you have anywhere that you'd recommend people to look for combos, or have you done any kind of content on that yourself? Um. Yeah, so uh the yeah, so like one of the um like a good place a good place really like for combos is uh YouTube in general. Um I learned a lot of the uh, like so, some of these combos off of YouTube. Uh I was actually I was I haven't made any combos like myself. The, a good a good place in general like is the Infernoble Facebook group is very good. Shout out them because like a lot of people are you know coming on, putting in a lot of work, been really trying to keep the deck alive since um, since the ban no, list dropped and put. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 that that really hurt the deck. But like a lot of people are putting in work 
um yeah youtuber youtubers is very good in general um i'd like to i yeah so uh i'm actually uh, i actually have two combos posted on someone else's youtube channel so that that's a channel called aether gaming um oh, we'll, we'll uh, link them down below um and yeah way anybody looking can find you yeah that's there. that's a friend that's a friend a friend of mine he uh so i i he i posted some combos on that um they're they they're they're tech technically not the combos i'm playing now but if you you could very easily see where to change up those um this is before i was playing vfd but there's one one combo on there is actually cool it's it shows me uh it shows a combo where you can actually sight lock your uh, your opponent during the standby phase, um, and then the other one is just the standard combo, but that doesn't end on VFD. But it's still Fogblade Herald and an Appaloosa. So like Aether mm-hmm. Gaming is a good place. To, um, uh, yeah, like if people want to just you know, I mean I'm on Facebook. Um, I can put my I can put my dueling dueling book name or something. People can check me out and show different combos. I'm always posting. In the Inferno, I've posted these combos for sure in the Infernoble group um, well, on Facebook. We can include all of that down below. Um, cool. Before we go, would you like to shout out anybody? Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to. Um, I'd love to shout out uh, my so I've, my friend uh, Nicholas Burgess. Um, he 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 actually before the banlist showed me these uh pk combos and showed me what the pk stuff can do and i was like this stuff is insane and then when the ban list dropped i was like looking for different things so uh, to fix this so i reflected on that um also my friend kenny fam he's in the um he's in uh, in the inferno but both of those guys are in the inferno group chat but i've also just been talking to them like in dms and stuff on messenger my friend uh vi val um again yeah like just been putting in a lot of help um yeah my uh, my friends kenny and vi were really helpful in terms of uh they helped me slim this down from a 50 card build to a 42 especially kenny kenny was like yo you can cut a i'm seeing eight cards you can cut there and i was like are you are you insane and then like um he was like yeah yeah, yeah bro yeah you definitely cut that down um and like he convinced me to play two Oliver, and I did. I didn't miss the third one at all. So like, yeah, shout out him because, uh, yeah, like he's been really help helpful. Like, um, yeah, I can't think. I can't. Uh, I'm trying to think of other people. Uh, shout out everyone in the Infernoble community and group ch- group chat, and um, anyone who's doing like really still putting in work with the deck because it's it's you know it's really taken a lot of work to um, make sure that like the deck can still play because a lot of people. You know, they could be just mo- easily, very easily, just moved on and gone on to other decks and stuff. But you know, me, I'm gonna like, dude, I have the cards. I've gone out and bought the cards. Like, you know, what I mean, I'm gonna still play this deck. I actually really enjoyed it. And one of the reasons I played this deck today, I was gonna play something like Dino or um, even like a Trap Shadal deck. But the reason I played this deck was because I thought, you know what, this would be like really cool to play because no one's gonna expect it. And if yeah. I can set up, if I can set up a board, like no one's gonna know how to deal with like Appaloosa, VFD, Charles, or Harold, even. Yeah. Um, like it's 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 an insane it's an insane deck. It's got a lot of firepower. So like I was like, you know, I'm gonna play this and have some fun with it as opposed to playing something like I'm not as passionate about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like a ton of fun to play. Like it is a deck that gets to just do everything. Um, we're going to have gameplay up from your final round as well. So I don't know if that will go up before this video or not. But if people want to see how the deck plays out, we'll have video of that. Yeah, like a lot, a lot of those, a lot of those combos. Um, I I only use like one or two cards. So you, if people want to see combos, they can really just see the gameplay for the most part because um, I, I a lot of those were just all off eyes old and stuff, so you could yeah. see that. So yeah, that's cool. cool. Yeah, well, awesome. Yeah, I love to see the gameplay. Thank you so much for joining right. us. Uh, congratulations yeah, cool. on your win, and we'll hopefully see yeah. more of you at future events. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank, thanks a million for uh, hosting it. I'll definitely try to get to the one on the 30th. Cool. Should be a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Cool. Yo, thanks, bro.